back on the 36 Pontiac, how to build a hot rod series. Really cool car, got a lot of stuff to it. Big playlist on that if you wanna catch up. This is the trunk lid that I put on the back of the car. Remember the, the car had one of those uh, not so attractive to me trunks that came out and you look like you could stand on it if you wanted to. This is a much more sexier, skirtier type trunk that we put on. So basically I cut the whole back of the car off and sculpted this in, made a bunch of pieces, made it all fit. I can't remember exactly what this trunk came off of, but it looks like it should have come off that car now. So what I'm doing is trying to save it. So let me get you in closer and I'll show you what we gotta go, what we gotta do. Now this is the uh, original channel that held the rubber. We gotta remove this. I'm gonna try to remove the skin off the back of this and get behind it. But before I do that, I wanna go ahead and uh, make this piece while we still got something to look at. Now in the past on something like this, I would have uh, probably acid dipped it and started with that. But the new me, trying to save a little bit of money, but yet get the same job done. We're gonna look at it a little bit different. So let's get this old piece off and start trying to make a new one. Wow, that could have gone so bad, but we were able to get every screw undone. All 12 screws are gonna come out fine. And let's see if we get this, uh, get this bracket off. Now we may not use this trunk mechanism. I think we're gonna put a uh, electric Let's get this all off, bagged and tagged, in case we need to use it. Move on to the next step. All right, so this is the stuff that you're seeing me get out. Now, I've been told over the years of doing these cars that this isn't asbestos, but I do treat it like that I clean up my hands and you can see that it's a very fibery product I do not know what it is if you know comment below but I have been told that it's not asbestos it's usually layered in door panels and like this trunk panel and usually I find it on GM products so what you're seeing me do I've got an antenna right here off of a car or you can use a co hanger or just about anything you want. I like the antenna because it's got a little ball on the end of it. Pry back just a little bit and separate the space in between here. And I'm kind of just riding it out like you could do a radiator. Just running the little ball up in here and breaking this stuff up and sucking it out with a vacuum cleaner. This stuff is terrible on a paint job. And then we've got parts of this that we've got to replace. It's terrible when it comes to welding, too. So anyway, tip of the day. So my buddies out there that have got all the high-end shops that I've run around with for years know that the old me would have made a new deck lid, made a new skin, welded it together. That would have cost the customer thousands and thousands of dollars to make this piece. By saving this one, it might not be the high-end way that we're all used to. But for those guys that are watching that are doing this stuff at home, this is gonna save you enough money to where you could buy you another car if you wanted to. So there's no sense throwing cash at a project when one way is gonna be just as good as the other way for what you're gonna do with your car. So I'm not knocking this way and I'm not knocking the other way. They both have their purposes. If you're gonna build a super high-end car where there is no budget, I mean, 
cars nowadays to where you're gonna go and fabricate panels like this in an inner panel and outer panel are gonna be in the millions of dollars. Because the hours that it takes to do this, you've gotta put that same amount of time into the other projects on the car. You're not gonna throw all that time on this and then do junk work on the rest of it. So when you set out to build a regular car, America's most beautiful roadster car, it starts out hand, hand fabricating everything. Guys, we are doing extremely nice work, showing you how to do extremely nice work at home on your budget. So for what one guy may have in this one panel, you may have in your complete car. I'm not kidding. All right, let's get back to work on this and quit flapping my gums. All right, so now that we've got the installation removed from the inside, still don't know what that is. You guys let me know if you know. It's time to get back up on the uh, shiny side of the hood or deck lid. So right now, while it's belt, bare metal, perfect opportunity to go ahead and start removing some of the dents. So you can see here where I had a series of dents, some over here, some out of the, out of the frame. What I've done is I've welded little studs in right here. Let me show you how we do that. Now what these studs will do, before I show you, let me tell you about them. What these studs will do, they'll weld to the dented area and allow you to put some pressure in that one area and do a, and pull up a little bit. Now it does two things. When you when you have a dent, a dent going in is actually stretching the metal. So when this is welded in with the stud gun, it actually puts a nice cherry size, dime size uh, heat circle right there. That's gonna sh that's gonna tighten that up a little bit. It's gonna shrink it where it was stretched gonna help you when you do this when you pull up on it so that's what I do now if it's a serious dent they have a little puller here and how that works is basically it'll slide on the stud just like that and then you can pull the handle and you can pull it out that way. Now these dents weren't big enough to do that. Now the old school way would have been the same type of a slide hammer, except for instead of having the studs, you would have a sheet metal screw on the other end of it that you would actually insert into the metal and pull out. Now what that does, that's gonna leave a hole everywhere that that screw was at. You're gonna have to go weld that hole up, and when you weld that hole up, it's gonna shrink that area again. So then you've got another indention. So this is the old school way. This is the new school way. And there's even actually newer stuff out there than this. I've had this for about 20 years. This is a Mac tool. They make Snap-on, they make, uh, gosh, oh, there's so many different brands now. But anyway, <clears throat> you insert one of the little copper electrodes in there. You find your dent, which I know there's one right there. So we're going to pull that right over the dent. Basically, just push down and pull the trigger. You can see the little bright mark right there. All right, so let's, uh, let's see if we can get this dent out right here with a stud puller. Matter of fact, we've already tweaked it enough. That's all it took. But by, but by doing this, you're eliminating the need for a lot of extra body filler. And in some cases, by the time you get through doing all your dent pulling, you can metal work, metal finish all of this and not have any body filler if you wanted to take that much time and do that. Another way I like to do this is still a little low in this area. So what I'm gonna do, put a little bit of pressure on that stud by pushing down on those vice grips. Tap around the stud. Now, I'm not tapping enough to put a dent in, but I am relieving it to where 
is going to get rid of the dent. And when you're doing that, if you have a little crown right there and you've gone too far, all you have to do is tap the stud back down and it'll push that hole. It'll push your uh, pin back down in there and help you level that out. So it may not look like it on camera, but this was a really big dent, like it got hit with a golf ball three times. Now it is pretty smooth. It's going to take a little skim coat of body filler, but that's all we got to worry about. All right, our next step, we've made this patch panel out of cardboard. Now I know I need to make it out of steel. And then we'll get this in place where it's going to go out of metal and then we'll uh we'll weld that in now if you wanted to carry it to the extreme we could make a new skin for this make a new back for this but that's getting into the uh do you want a really, really, really nice driver that's going to last you a lifetime? Or do you want something that is a half a million dollars and you don't want to drive it? All right, there's the back side of our repair. You can see there's a little bit of pitting, but the rush is going to clean up pretty well. We'll get that coated up. It'll be good as new. All right, we got the corner welded back in. I still got to do a little bit of dollying, but hey, it's not rusted out anymore. So as you can see, we, we put some weld through primer on the back side of both pieces and all down inside the cavity ought to last forever. Now we're gonna coat the inside of this when we get it all ready. Now I've got to, uh, of course I gotta fix that hole right there that I made and then fix the hole right here from the latch. We're gonna do something a little different right there. Keep, remove, keep, remove, keep, remove. I think we're gonna go ahead and remove it. So let's get that out of the way so it'll match the door handles. Thanks for stopping by the shop and thanks for helping. I've been absent for just a little, little while. It's been really, really hectic around here and something just had to give. And unfortunately, that was getting stuff edited. Anyway, I'm back on it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you got something out of it. As always, get out in the garage and go build something. See you guys in the next episode. Spanky's gone.